Professor Nesvestailova, you are a highly regarded uh, economist. You teach international political economy at the University of London City. And uh, I would like to ask you a first question. Uh, well, the uh, financial crisis has severely affected our economies. Uh, could you explain for our participants uh, the origins of the financial crisis? Well, really what is happening now in, in the European context uh, could be described as the third phase in the global financial meltdown that started in August 2007. Its first phase was the subprime, the fiasco of the subprime US market um, in subprime mortgages. Um, it, it was supposed to be a very isolated event that would not have, been, would not have affected the world financial system. But because of the complexity and the nature of financial integration today, it did affect the world financial system through banking institutions who were tied into very complex structures of credit. So the second phase of that crisis was what we saw in autumn 2008, when Lehman Brothers collapsed, triggering a whole fiasco um, of cross-border banking collapses with bankruptcies and unprecedented measures that the governments took in order to bail out financial institutions, in order to inject liquidity into financial markets and individual companies. Um, from then onwards, chronologically, we have a worldwide more or less recession, or definitely recession for individual countries. Um, but what is happening now in the European context is only the third leg of that long journey of basically private debt that was initially traded by financial agents and by, by banks with each other in the financial market. It was then partly bailed out by governments, i.e. it was taken on public balance sheets. And now what we're seeing is that um, the debt of weaker governments, of governments who, whose sovereign credit rating is not that strong, is being devalued or questioned in the financial, by the financial markets at the moment. So, we are now in the third phase of the global financial crisis. Could there be a following one? Could there be a fourth stage which could be worse than what we have known at the moment? Most things are conceivable in the current stage of, of financial capitalism. And unfortunately, if the current if the current third phase of this crisis is not really mediated well, or it's mediated only on a short-term basis, it is very probable or plausible um, that there will be either a, th a fourth stage to this crisis through an international recession, when parts of the world are deeply affected by economic shrinkage and deflation and just can cannot really pull together or synchronize their growth with everybody else, or indeed, it's also conceivable that the crisis is not managed very well, that various, various structural and institutional problems that exist, for example, in the euro area, prevent the solution to the crisis from being agreed upon quite quickly and swiftly. Um, and then you don't know what, what can happen. Because Greece and the, the current uh, headlines involving Greece are only a very tiny fraction of a potential problem that can happen um, in Europe. In order to face the, 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 cri the economic crisis, uh, governments are now implementing all over Europe uh, deflation policies. Do you believe that that could be successful? Uh, uh, could that be a way to uh, get out of the recession? The shrinkage policies, as I call them, or the deficit cutting policies, um, they, are, they are workable in order to reduce the deficit. And this is what they do. However, as um, many of my economists' colleagues, most of them are happening, happen to be heterodox economists, they're not within economics mainstream. 
they do recognize that once you start reducing one side of the balance sheet, your expenditure, you inevitably reduce the other side of the balance sheet, your income. And when governments retreat in such a way from interfering or maintaining economic stability, employment, public sector, the whole economic, our economic life, the area of our economic activity is being reduced, it's shrinking. There is a process of debt deflation going on, but also importantly, there is no stimulus to economic growth. There is deficit reduction pro program, but there is nothing there to spur economic growth and therefore more earnings into the future that could actually take economies out of the current crisis. So, um, in Minsky's understanding, in Hyman Minsky's word, the governments today are not really fulfilling the twofold mission that they are supposed to. They are pro some of them are providing the big bank support to their financial institutions. They have been lending money, they have been bailing out funds, they are supporting the markets, they are employing programs of quantitative easing. But the other important pillar that Minsky and Keynesians ha have called upon um, would be to be the big government, the big economic agent as a state. The state is a big economic agent in the whole economic circulation. And that, unfortunately, is not um, taken quite seriously by current reform programs or crisis management programs. According to you, uh, should be, are we now waiting uh, for a new Keynes, for a new a revival of Keynesian policies? We can always wait, and I'm sure there are candidates who, who are very capable and eloquent to um, be competing for the name of, of New Keynes. Um, but on a more serious note, I think certainly the, the type of relationship and the paradigm that governed the relationship between private market actors and society for the past few decades will have to be rethought and adjusted to the, to the realities of the 21st century. It can no longer be sustainable at a global level and it can no longer fit um, most economic agents that arise on the scene. We have now new players in, in economic geography. They are large continental powers with their own organization of economy and politics, with their own societal institutions and culture. And uh, it would be very naive to think that a very narrow part of economic doctrine that was part of this new liberal consensus for the second half of the 21st, 20th century would be applicable to the rest of the 21st or even to the first half of the 21st. So the boundaries of the relationship between the public and the private will need to be rethought. And one of the most crucial questions that would need to be addressed quite seriously by academics, policy makers and even society is how the costs of failures, such as the current financial crisis, are being handled. Who assumes the costs? <laughs>